Hello and welcome to Lesson 1 in the Essay Writing Process, Developing a Rhetorical Focus for an Essay. This video is a presentation of my English professor at YouTube, and I am Nuala Mary Linka, aka Nunu, your English professor. In this lesson about developing a rhetorical focus for an essay, we will ask and answer three questions about the rhetorical focus. First, what is it? Second, why is it so important? And third, how is it created? Let's move to our first question. The rhetorical focus. What is it? An essay's rhetorical focus consists of three key parts of the whole that is an essay. Think of the essay like the human body. It's a whole made up of different parts. Here we see the head, we see the arms, we see the legs, the torso all the different parts that make up the whole that is the human body. Now let's look at this photograph of a stack of wooden building blocks painted different colors. We can see it's a whole made up of different parts, like the human body. Now, let's imagine that it's an essay. Well, if it truly were an essay, we would know that up here, these blocks at the top of the stack, the purple, the blue, and the red blocks, are parts of the introduction. And the blocks at the bottom of the stack, the yellow block and the blue block, would have to be parts of the conclusion. And all these blocks, these parts in the middle, would be um, the body of the essay, all the different parts of the body, uh, topic sentences, transitions, and supporting examples, and other parts of the essay. But where does the rhetorical focus fit into the essay? And what are the three key parts of the rhetorical focus? Well. Let's answer that last question first. What are the three key parts of the rhetorical focus? The rhetorical focus consists of, number one, its first part, a thesis. Now, you've heard of a thesis before, and you've probably heard it referred to as the main idea. This is a definition that was given to you. I think this definition is a little vague. It's unclear because there are other parts of the essay that we could uh, characterize or define as a main idea. So let's stick with our very simple and clear definition of the thesis here, that it's simply the writer's overall opinion about the essay topic. What the writer is trying to prove is true in the essay for the second part of the rhetorical focus, the targeted reader group, which is never the teacher. The targeted reader group is what kind of people the writer wants to read his or her essay so that the writer can influence these people to think a certain way about the essay topic or, and here's the third part of the rhetorical focus, a persuasive purpose, which is the writer's reason for supporting the thesis so that the reader group will think what and act how in relation to the essay topic after this group finishes reading the essay. Now, if you've heard of the persuasive purpose before, you might have heard it referred to as a call to action. And uh, this name is appropriate because a persuasive purpose is a call to action. It's trying to persuade the reader group to think and act a certain way about the essay topic after reading the essay. OK, let's move on. Our second question about the rhetorical focus. Why is it so important? Well, let's answer this question with a question. Can we see the three key parts of the rhetorical focus in an essay? Are they located in specific parts of the essay? If I pull up our photograph of the stack of wooden building blocks painted different colors and we imagine it's uh, an essay again, we know that these blocks up at the top, specifically the purple, the blue, and the red blocks, are the introduction. Uh, the blocks at the bottom are the conclusion, and all these other blocks are different parts of the body of the essay. But could I point to a part of this essay here and say, well, this is the rhetorical focus, maybe this purple block, or maybe it's this blue block, or it's this yellow block? No, I couldn't do that. If I wanted to show you the rhetorical focus in an essay and use a stack of wooden building blocks, I would have to use a photograph like this. And you'll say, well, wait a minute, all the blocks are not painted, and they're, so they're all the same color. They're all the same, and that's exactly right. The rhetorical focus is found everywhere in an essay. The rhetorical focus is the thought of an essay. It's brain.
we see evidence of this brain at work throughout an essay. Now you're probably thinking, hey, well, what about the thesis? Isn't it only found in one place in an essay, the introductory paragraph? Well, a thesis can be located anywhere in an essay, not just in the introductory paragraph. And even if a thesis is first stated in an introductory paragraph, the job of an essay is to support the thesis, so evidence of the thesis is found everywhere in an essay. We would find the thesis, the targeted reader group, and the persuasive purpose everywhere in an essay. Every essay is an argument attempting to prove that the writer's opinion or thesis about a specific topic is true or logical. Why this opinion or thesis should make sense to a targeted reader group for a call to action or persuasive purpose. Therefore, an essay's rhetorical focus is a writer's logos in an essay, his or her logic or reasoning for supporting an opinion or thesis about a specific topic, and it permeates or soaks through an essay. Now, logos is the official term or word for the brain of the essay. Logos is from the Greek, and uh, of course it means the logic or reasoning that the writer uses. All right, let's continue. Our third question about the rhetorical focus, how is it created? Well, an essay writer must think, but what about? What about? Well, the essay writer must think about what he or she thinks about the essay topic. Now, you're probably thinking, why? I already know what I think about any essay topic. I have an opinion, but everybody has an opinion. You've heard that saying before, and uh, you know that everybody has an opinion. Your opinion must be an informed opinion, not an uninformed opinion. So think. But how do you think? How do you create the rhetorical focus? Well, read information about the topic so you become informed about the topic. Find credible articles about the topic in library databases and on the internet and books if you have time and read them. Go to the library or visit the library in cyberspace and read information about the topic and discuss the topic with peers and friends. And in this way, think about the topic. Now, if we had a topic to write about, such as why are student success rates so low in U.S. schools, I'm pretty sure you would have an opinion, I'm very sure, uh, because you've had many years of schooling. But you need to have an informed opinion. So you need to read articles and books if you have time and discuss this topic with friends, and you'd come up with different answers. Maybe it's lazy teachers, teachers who have lost their passion for teaching or were never passionate about teaching, or uh, they're not expert in their field. Um, so this could be a problem, or it could be racism, or poverty, or uh, parents who don't parent, who think that parent is just a noun, a person, place, or thing, not a verb. Parent means to guide, and you need to guide the children to study. Or maybe it's bad administrators, administrators who have bad attitudes, who regard students as enrollment numbers rather than human beings, or who misspend school funds, or maybe it's uh, this person here, a politician, who does not prioritize education, so we end up with schools like this with trash strewn steps and not enough money to fund them. Okay, let's imagine we are writing about this topic, why are student success rates so low in U.S. schools? Well, my thesis, you know, would dictate my targeted reader group and my persuasive purpose. My thesis is an opinion about this topic, and it needs to be an informed opinion. Let's see what I came up with. Student success rates in U.S. schools are low for a variety of reasons, among them poorly paid and trained teachers. But the number one reason for student failure involves the study process. Many students do not know how to study or realize that learning takes place not only in the classroom, but also and mostly inside a student's head and outside the classroom when he or she studies. So if this is my informed opinion, my thesis that I come up with regarding this topic, who would my logical reader group be? 
who needs to hear this thesis? Uh, who do I need to convince that this thesis is true? Well, a logical targeted reader group would be students. And what would my persuasive purpose be? Well, to encourage students to become autodidacts. This word, auto, self, didact, taught. Autodidacts, to use the awesome power of their brains to become their own best teachers via the study process. So here I have a rhetorical focus for my essay, and I'm ready to begin the next step in the essay writing process, which would be outlining and writing the essay. But could I come up with more than one rhetorical focus for this topic? Of course I could. If I had a classroom of 40 students, each of them might come up with a different rhetorical focus. Let's take a look at one more focus uh, for this topic that we could develop. So I have my topic, why are student success rates so low in US schools? I have my thesis, which dictates my targeted reader group and my persuasive purpose. And here my thesis is, student success rates in US schools are low because of standard obstacles to student success presented by these players in the educational process. Teachers, students, parents, the curriculum, what is taught, administrators, the people who run the school and decide how funds are spent, and politicians and institutional classism and racism, built-in social classes of rich and poor for generations, and uh, racial discrimination built into the system that presents a standard obstacle to student success. So who would need to hear this thesis? Uh, who would this be important uh, to um, address this thesis to? Well, my targeted reader group could be uh, two groups here I have. One, all of the players in the educational process, and two, politicians and U.S. voters. And what is my persuasive purpose for these groups? Well, one, to encourage all the players in the educational process to avoid creating unnecessary obstacles to student success, and two, to inspire politicians to prioritize education in the U.S. by fighting for the funding to institute reduced class sizes of 16 to 20 students. Imagine that and increase teacher salaries so they can afford houses in their geographical area. And here I'm thinking of LAUSD, Los Angeles Unified School District. Teacher salaries are right around $60,000, and houses are several hundred thousand dollars. So we need to increase teacher salaries uh, for their geographical area, and also equip classrooms yearly with the latest educational technology and I want to encourage voters to take away political power from politicians who are not dedicated to making meaningful, positive changes in the US educational system. So here I have a rhetorical focus, and I'm ready to outline and write my essay. OK, this has been lesson one in the essay writing process, developing a rhetorical focus for an essay. This video is a presentation of my English professor at YouTube. I am Nuala Mary Linka, AKA Nunu, your English professor. And in this video, I asked and answered three questions about the rhetorical focus. What is it? Why is it so important? And how is it created? After developing a rhetorical focus, where should we go? The next steps are outlining and writing your essay. See my video lessons regarding these steps in my English professor at YouTube. I hope this lesson has been useful to you.